I've clicked onto the Global Tropical Overview for January the 24th, 2024. As is always the case in these videos, the thought I express your mind alone, and when making de decisions ahead of any tropical cyclones, look towards your local weather office, local emergency management, and local tropical cyclone warning center. So we've got a few systems to talk about today. We've got Tropical Low 5 in the Coral Sea. This system is forecast to make landfall along the coastline of Queensland as we go through the course of this week, likely more on Thursday evening. But impacts will start before that, and we'll talk about the impacts and timing on that in more specifics in just a bit. We've also got Invest 92 West about to move over the island of Mauritius, and we'll bring some heavy rainfall and wind impacts to that island over the next day. We're also going to be talking about Tropical Cyclone and Grec again, and the future of that throughout the Indian Ocean. But I'll talk about those two systems after 5U. It's sort of going in that order. And I will leave timestamps so you can skip ahead to those portions of the video if you want to skip ahead to those. So we're going to start off here with 5 view. You can see it here spinning in the Coral Sea. Uh, just to orient, or, excuse me, orient yourself a little bit, here's the system center right here. And this is the coastline of Queensland here. So the system is continuing to draw closer to the coastline. And over the next couple of days, it will continue to, to do that up to landfall, likely still on Thursday evening local time. Now, the system right now is not doing too well. I'll go to the zoomed in uh, visible satellite loop. You can see the system is still not very well organized. We've got this sort of broad circulation still going. Uh, in the coral sea and the system really has not changed too much since yesterday the center might have gotten a little bit tighter you can see some of the little areas of low pressure within this larger gyre uh, these can help to tighten up the broad area of low pressure that you have associated with the system and i'd say by now once the system finally gets organized convection by then i would be comfortable calling this a tropical cyclone but the problem is, ever since my video yesterday, it really has not made many attempts to fire any convection over the center. It has continuously, at least from what I can see, been battling some dry air. You can sort of see that there's this uh, layer east of the storm where there's just not much clouds at all east of the system. And what I think this is, this is dry air trying to get into the system. It's successfully infiltrating the system and keeping this east side dry you can see some of the dry air in the water vapor loop if you look in that same area east of the center which is about here you can see the coloring on this rgb water vapor loop is green uh, indicating moist upper levels but can hint at uh, more dry air but beneath that surf or layer in the mid levels and what i think is happening is it's just the system keeps uh, ingesting all this dry air and is not able to take in or fire convection rather uh, because of this. Now we do have some convection on the western side and I'd imagine that over time this is going to start to fire and wrap around the rest of this center. Now as the system spins here across the ocean what it's doing is it's picking up moisture off the ocean and it's trying in that process to moisten the the, the column aloft so it's trying to get that middle dry air and that middle column more moist get that dry air out of there and mix it out and once that happens in a lot of these cases you'll get convection to fire and it will be able to organize itself and then you'll finally get a tropical cyclone now the good news is with this is that the system is not going to rapidly intensify really i don't think at all before it gets to the coastline of australia just because of the struggles it's had over the past two or three days it's really taken away its time to intensify if it had gotten its act together earlier. And right now, the landfall intensity is continuously coming down. We were yesterday talking about Category 3. It's due to it now spending another day as a tropical low and not a tropical cyclone. We can now take that down a category to Category 2. And if somehow the system does not fire convection... Over the course of the day, if this dry air still gets the best of it, and we're here talking tomorrow about still tropical low five, maybe we could bring that down another category to category one. And that would be good. We can minimize the exact impacts. Now, impacts will still come with this system. Uh, that's extremely hard to avoid when you have a low like this coming towards the coastline. We're still looking at potential for gusty winds heavy rainfall, and potential for storm surge along the coastline. Now, the storm surge is not going to be likely too bad, but you can still have some water rise along the immediate coastline. 
Uh, now, in terms of when, this is an, or ASCAP pass we got way earlier. I think it was last evening local time. Uh, we don't really have a more up-to-date one uh, than this, but you can see the center location was about here, and we had some significant winds still pretty far west of the system, and there's likely some stronger winds in here, and I uh, would imagine that those are going to remain, maybe get a little bit stronger by the time the system gets to the coastline of Queensland. Now, this is the current forecast from the Bureau of Meteorology. As I talked about, just because the system has not become a tropical cyclone in the past day, we can bring down a category to about category two coming into the coastline. In terms of track, the general idea has remained the same for the center track coming into about Townsville right now, where a cyclone watch is still in place. Now, there have been some changes to the cyclone watch and warning. Uh, St. Lawrence uh, up to Serena, no longer in a cyclone watch right now. Uh, from Serena up to Air, I think is how you say that, uh, is a cyclone warning now, including Balwyn and Hamilton Island. And from Air up to uh, Innisfail, or Innisfail, I think is how you say that, cyclone watch in place. And this cyclone watch does extend a little bit further inland, uh, well inland of Townsville, as that's where the center is going to be tracking. And I wouldn't be surprised if later today we start to get a cyclone warning coming up further in the coastline, including areas like Townsville, as the system is forecast to make landfall uh, in less than 48 hours by now. Uh, but you can see that there is still going to be a significant wind field. You can see the red here denoting significant winds of, I believe, that might be 50 knots or about 60 miles per hour. Uh, and you can see that when the system comes in along that part of the coastline to the east of the center and down the coast, you can still have a lot of onshore flow, and that could lead to uh, some strong winds off the, off the ocean, but also some water rises along the coastline. And as the system moves inland, it'll weaken as storms naturally do, but heavy rainfall will spread inland. And right now, rainfall totals are looking to be about 100 to 150 millimeters in some spots and we might have some locally higher totals uh, greater than that uh, if the system does uh, get more convection going over the center and we actually get maybe some rainfall staying over one area over a long period of time but the good news is once again I'm not expecting a very strong cyclone here uh, the system is not likely to be you know category three category four anymore we're looking at now a category one or two coming in Stay safe in uh, Australia. I'll leave a link to the Beer Meteorology so you can go to their cyclone page and look at their latest forecasts. We're now going to move back to Mauritius and La Reunion as we have Invest 92S here north of the island. It might be a bit hard to pick out where the center is, but it's underneath this little blob of convection north of the island. And you'll immediately notice that this is a bit further west than where it was anticipated to be. Uh, yesterday, we talked about yesterday, the center track was taking it east of Mauritius, but the cone did uh, have a margin of error that had the system tracking right over Mauritius. And the system has trended a bit further west. What could have happened is all this convection might have pulled the low level center a bit further west. That can happen in sometimes these weaker and sort of sheared cases as the system is looking to be a little bit sheared right now. But you can see the system is actually making its way towards a tropical cyclone. We've now got deep convection firing and organizing over the center of circulation. And I wouldn't be surprised if this uh, sustains over the next 6 to 12 hours, we get a tropical cyclone designation from Mateo, France. The system is very close to meeting that criteria. And now the impacts are going to be going through Mauritius. We're going to be talking about strong winds of tropical storm force and heavy rainfall. You can see that this is a lot of deep convection firing over the system, and the system's going to go right over the island now, and it's going to dump a lot of rainfall, and we may get uh, some totals of about 100, maybe 150 millimeters over the island. There also might be some outer bands here for La Reunion. You're not going to get the center of the system, but there could still be some outer bands. You can see this little band of thunderstorm activity earlier in the loop did come right over you, and that could lead to some rainfall over the island, but significant impacts are not anticipated across that region. Uh, you can see the water vapor loop here. Uh, the system is centered about here, and I'm going to show you here just a little bit of the shear that might be impacting it. If you look at some of the thunderstorms here, 
Uh, in and around uh, Rod Riggs, there are some of their tops being sheared off towards the northwest. This might be some of the shear that the system is dealing with, which would make sense if you look where all the convection is and where the center is approximated to be. It is on the southeastern side of all that convection, which will line up with that shear vector that you've got there. Now, some good news for Rod Riggs, because the system is now so far west to where it's now north of Mauritius, most of the impacts are going to miss you, and we're not looking now at any significant winds coming your way. It looks like you're going to get away with this one uh, similarly to how you did with Bilal, uh, but there could still be some rainfall, maybe from some outer bands of the system. You can also see that on the eastern side of the system, it still has some influence some, from some not only flow on the far eastern side, and this might cause some shower and thunderstorm activity across the island. So it looks like you're not going to get fully away without any impacts, but good news is here you're not getting a direct hit. Unfortunately, can't say the same for Mauritius, but at the same time, not as strong a system as just a tropical storm. Uh, but hopefully we won't have too many flooding is issues like we did with Bilal last week. Uh, this is the current forecast coming from Mateo France. You can see forecasting a moderate tropical storm later today as it comes over the, uh, the island of Mauritius, and then after that tracking southeast and becoming a, a severe tropical storm before becoming a non-tropical cyclone well south of the islands. And after this, it looks like things are going to quiet down across the region, and we won't have to deal with any tropical cyclones at least for the next several days. And I'll talk about and Greg as well, as that system is not looking to come your way either. So you might get an extended break here from tropical cyclone activity. Uh, this is the final thing I'm going to show you for this system. We do still have a class two cyclone warning in place for Mauritius. I'll leave a link to their website in the description so you can skip ahead to that page and get the latest uh, cyclone warning information for the island of Mauritius. All right, finally, we're going to move to Tropical Cyclone and Grec. We haven't talked about the system for a while. The last time we talked about it was it was near the Cocos Island. Uh, but now it has moved pretty far away from the island and is now uh, about to move, excuse me, further southwest out into the open Indian Ocean. And the system is likely to intensify at least some, it looks like, on the models here as it does so. As you can see right now, the system is not doing the best. We have sort of this curved band structure with this band of thunderstorms wrapping into the center of the circulation, but there seems to be a little bit of dry air on the eastern side. If we look at the water vapor loop, you can see this a little bit better. You can see that we don't have a lot of whites on the eastern side. We do have blues indicating that there is still ample moisture on the eastern side, but there is some more dry air to the east of the system, and there is some subtle uh, easterly winds to the east of the system, and this might be trying to get some of that dry air into the eastern part of the system. It also could just be there's some dry air to the northwest of the system, and through the circulation it's trying to pull that in, and that is disrupting the eastern side of the storm. Now, over the coming days, the models are forecasting the system to have a pretty favorable environment, and the uh, upper level environment will likely favor tropical cyclone intensification. Now, the question is, will it be able to fend off completely the dry air? Will it be able to get itself an intercourse structure without being completely disrupted every time by a dry air intrusion? Uh, now, in terms of track for the system, you can see that right now we're going to have a mid-level ridge building south of the system. And this is going to track the system towards the southeast away from Cocos Island. And the good news is because we have our system by Mauritius still in the picture by this point, this is going to keep these ridges here from connecting. This is going to keep the system from just tracking this way and potentially impacting the islands of Rodrigues, Mauritius, and La Reunion. Because this little break is here, this system is going to be able to track southeast and then eventually recurve down to the south. And you can see that on the model here. As it does so, you can see it, it tracks further south as another trough digs in uh, after our storm over Mauritius weakens. But the good news is here, models are not really suggesting at all that the system will come towards the islands further west. The current uh, consensus is that the system will stay out to sea. And it could get decently strong if it stays, uh, uh, if it has a I guess a better time fighting the dry air. You can see the upper level environment is forecast to be fairly favorable. The GFS has not actually getting a little bit even more favorable uh, in the next 24 to 36 hours with more of a divergent flow aloft. 
and you can see that there's not really big any big features to share the system there is going to be this upper level low you can see this forecasted in the gfs and this might put some flow i guess this is no this isn't a i i drew the, the flow along or along that wrong i apologize for that but you can see this might put some northerly flow onto the system and that could shear the system a little bit if the system is tracking like this and you've got that little bit of a crosswind sometimes i confuse the hemispheres of which direction lows and high pressures spin but you can see that there's not really a big trough here to bring a ton of shear to it there's not a very big strong ridge to put a bunch of stronger winds aloft for the system and in general we're going to have a fairly low shear environment for our storm and assuming again that it manages to fend off the dry air it'll likely be able to intensify some and we might get a decent out to sea tropical cyclone here and the key message really is the system is not likely to come towards the land areas and this will likely be just an out to sea system this is the european ensemble and you can see all the members here 51 members i did look that up it's a 51 member ensemble and you can see pretty much all the members showing the system staying out to sea it does get a bit messy along the island just because of 92s and models trying to hint at maybe something else forming later down the line but a lot of the guidance right now on this next system is very weak and we're not really going to talk about that too much right now but as of right now for La Reunion, Mauritius, and Rod Riggs, after 92S passes, you all will be in a tropical cyclone break, which I'm sure will be heavily appreciated. And hopefully we'll keep that uh, going throughout the rest of this month and maybe throughout the rest of cyclone season. We can get lucky there. Uh, but keep in mind, February and March, those are the peak seasons of cyclone season. So make sure you're not letting your guard down and you're staying tuned to Mateo France and local uh local sources that you know if a tropical cyclone is heading your way a uh, final thing for angrec you can see the bureau of meteorology forecast cone about to exit their area of uh, responsibility it will go to mateo france after it passes the 90 degree east of longitude line but you can see them forecasting a category three here i wouldn't roll out a category four on the australian scale as a system uh, may have that chance to get that strong but again does it also potentially just suck up so much dry air to it where it stays so weak we'll have to keep an eye on that but it's going to be a nice little tropical cycle of the track out to sea over the next week uh, but that's all that i've got for today for today the tropics are still pretty active i'll have future uploads throughout the next couple of days on tropical low five invest 92s i might touch on tomorrow but after today it's really going to be moving away from the island so we're not going to be talking about that all too much but stay safe ahead of the storms uh, that are going to be impacting land uh, this week and i'll leave once again a lot of links in the top of the description so you can skip ahead to those websites and get the latest information but that's it for now thanks for watching